good afternoon, sir. My <coughs> question is, uh, is a local issue uh, regarding uh, the uh, on Friday special or our, our festivals. We know we have a festival on Friday afternoon where the mosque is um, having a prayer. So we need a couple of hours uh, uh, free time so everybody can accommodate and come to our prayer. Second question is, a local issue again, these are, in one of Newham, I think, I believe, 385 uh, betting shops, I believe. And there are too far too many people, uh, shops, so there has to be done something there. Mm -hmm. An issue on drug matter. Local uh, issue on the drugs are very, very high. People are addicted to these matters, and government has not done anything to prevent this. Uh, I personally took a, a couple of time going to the police station, inform the authority, but they have not done anything. Mm -hmm. And the people are still in area, they are uh, uh, selling drugs, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. nothing has been done. Thank you. I'm just going to repeat the questions for the females okay. upstairs so they can... Uh, so the first question was regards to uh, particularly Friday prayer uh, time where we would like to see whether the borough can assist with free parking for a period of time uh, so those who are coming from a little bit of a distance uh, in terms of parking uh, can park for, for around an hour or two without any, uh, any worry or disruption. <coughs> Well, can, do you want to read the other two? Because yeah, uh, sure. The, the, other uh, the second question was regards to the number of betting shops in, in New Ham. It's, it's exploded over the last five or ten years in terms of the, uh, the, the population of betting shops and, uh, and the problems that that causes. And, and then with regards to drugs uh, in the borough. Um, and I think um, uh, it's whether the borough is really being proactive in tackling this. And I think um, uh, somebody else sent me some stats in terms of, of last month, in, sorry, February 2015, only eight arrests happened in the borough uh, with regards to drug, drug offences specifically. So we know it's happening. I mean, if you go to the parks, for example, you can see uh, some of the youth there as well um, and so on. So we know it's happening, but it's whether it's being proactively being tackled or not. Okay. Right. Um, well, first of all, on parking, uh, I'm, I'm basically going to hand this question to my council colleagues too, and Mesh and uh, Obey, because this is about, you know, I've, we've just been uh, in the high street this morning, uh, and uh, a number of residents in those streets off the high street feel very, very strongly that when they come and try and park outside their homes, there's no, there's no space for them. Uh, so they want fewer people coming into the area. Um, and um, I, the, the request for free parking for Friday prayers is one that's made to us from time to time. I mean, my slight scepticism about this is if you look around the area on a Friday, I don't see that many empty parking spaces available. So I'm not, I'm not sure that there is the, the kind of capacity in the area to take significantly more, you know, more visitors than there are at the moment coming to the area. But there, I think what, um, I think the council does need to look very carefully at its parking <coughs> policies for a whole host of, of reasons. There's a lot of concern about the way parking is controlled. And the, 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 the kind of good news that I've picked up over the, the last few weeks is that the, the council is going to carry out a thorough review of its whole approach to parking, and I'm sure there will be some big changes as a result of that. Whether it will be possible to include a, a, a free period on Friday uh, at prayer time, I don't know, but that's certainly, I mean, it, it's a point that's very often raised with us. Sorry to interrupt you, and there is uh, already uh, these schemes running in Tower, Tower Hamlet. Yeah, Why should it be done in, in uh, Borough Newham? Yeah, yeah, no, they, they, you're absolutely right, they do it in Tower Hamlet's. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm sure it is something they'll look at during their review. What their conclusion will be, I don't know. Unmesh might be able to, to say a little more. Shall I, shall I do the betting shops and, yeah. then, and then come? Uh, let me, because the, the betting shops one is one I very, very strongly agree with you about. I think there are about 85 betting shops in Newham at the moment. I mean, I stood up in the House of Commons last year and I read a list of all the betting shops just in our high street. You know, you've got a, a Paddy Power in Barking Road, you go around the corner, you've got two more Paddy Powers in the high street, you've got a Jennings Bet and a Bet Fred, and, and, and on and on it goes. There are far too many of them. And of course, they're not really about betting in the way that it used to be. What they're about is those machines they have. They're allowed to have up to four of those terrible fixed odd betting terminals in there. And those machines make a fortune for the proprietors at the cost of people living in our area. And every now and then I meet 
you know, uh, a, a mother with her children who has discovered that her husband has remortgaged the house in order to pay for betting, gambling debts, and, you know, terrible, terrible suffering, which is uh, caused by uh, those establishments and, and by those machines. Now, Newham Council has taken a bolder stand than any council in the country against these shops. The problem is that they don't, they often don't need planning permission to set up. Um, because of the way that, that what's called the planning use classes work, uh, any, any bank, for example, any premises that used to be a bank can automatically be used for a betting shop without them even having to apply for planning permission. When the council does refuse planning permission, they have refused permission on occasions, then all the betting shops do is they appeal and the government overturns the refusal. The government, uh, or the council, also has to give a license for a betting shop. Newham Council has repeatedly refused licenses for betting shops, and all the shops do is they appeal to a magistrate's court, and the magistrates overturns the council's refusal. I went with the council. Mm. Uh, this was when uh, Paddy, Paddy Power was trying to set up, well, I think there were a couple of them, but one of them was for Paddy Power, a new Paddy Power in Green Street, yeah. just at the end of Pleasure yeah. Grove. Yeah. The council took a very, very firm stand against that. I went to the magistrate's court, or it actually wasn't the magistrate's court, it was a crown court, I suppose. I mean, they had a judge anyway, um, to give evidence in support of the council against that. And they, they just completely threw the case out, and of course they, they gave Paddy Pan the permission. So what we have to do is change the law. We need a separate planning class for betting shops. Mm. So if you want to set up a betting shop, you need to apply to the local authority for permission for a betting shop, and the council can say no. That's what we need, but it's going to require a change in the law. And we've said, the Labour Party has said, if we're the government, we will introduce that change in the law because we cannot allow things to carry on as we are. Uh, the, we were also arguing that local councils should be able to reduce the number of those machines in each shop. At the moment, they can have up to four. Yeah. Um, Labour wants to change the law so that the council, if it's worried about what's happening, can reduce the number of machines. And the truth is, if we were to reduce the number of those machines, then some of those shops would then close down, which is what I think all of us would want to see. Yeah. So it does require uh, a change in the law to, uh, to, to, to bring that about. Let me ask, perhaps, one next to comment on the, on the, the, the parking yeah. issue again. And I'll also come to the drugs issue as well. Oh, the drugs as well, um, yes. Firstly, I can endorse everything that Stephen has said. Uh, talking about betting shops, I actually sit on the licensing committee, and our record shows these are public documents. We actually refuse. Uh, applications, but then they go and appeal, and we've got to decide very carefully whether we can fight the appeals, because if we lose the appeals, it's our money, your money, yeah. that we could pay their costs as well, and this runs into tens of thousands of pounds. But we did take a political decision to actually pursue uh, uh, one of the betting shops uh, all the way to the, you know, up to the highest court, um, and I'm awaiting progress on that. Uh, but as Stephen says, it's a question of changing the legislation. We can refuse, but the way planning laws right now are, uh, and it's a national problem. Every high street, I was in White, I was at a function at the London Muslim Centre yesterday, and I had been into the back streets of Whitechapel for a long time. And I was walking through Commercial Road, and again over there, the betting shops, fast food shops, chicken shops, kebab issues, everything. You know, of course, you know we want all these restaurants as well, but we also want a mixed economy, shops and businesses. So it is a national issue, but we are leading a campaign at the forefront, and this will affect New York Council against fixed sort betting terminals, restrict the number of, 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 of uh, ideally I would like to you know, have only two or three per net, uh, chain. But what they do is they buy up empty uh, units simply to prevent the opposition coming in. I sat on a committee meeting when Lab Brooks wanted to open a betting shop opposite uh, Upton Park Station, and we asked, well, where is the demand, where is the need? Forget your own issue, whether you think that you know, your own views on betting and morality and all that. I'm talking here about law and legalities. And uh, uh, they tried to say, well, there is a need. And we said, look, there's one just a hundred years away, the junction with Pleasure Grove. And, and, and uh, you know, so where is the need? And they could not, you know, in my opinion, answer the question. It was simply to actually open up a sh a sh uh, uh, their own branch there to prevent the opposition uh, coming in. Um, 
the issue of par uh, parking and Friday prayers, this issue that I know the community feels very, very strongly about. And can I say here very clearly that there is going to be a review. There's a new councillor in charge of parking, now councillor Ken Clark, uh, and he's looking at all aspects of parking. I'm not going to make any false promises here. We are aware that the community is very, so, you know, it's not just the Bilal Mosque or the mosques as well. What I can tell you is that we are, we have what is called a residential parking zone, and we don't charge for the first car. Uh, and 60% of the borough is, uh, is actually a residential parking zone. We are looking now to make, whether to make the whole borough a residential parking zone. Because what happens is some streets have residential parking and they enjoy it. But then the traffic is displaced to the other side. Yeah. Uh, and uh, hold on, let me just say before, right? Is the council doesn't decide which area is a residential parking. It's a residence. If the majority of residents, 50% plus, decide that they want it, fine, you have it. It's your choice, not, uh, uh, not our choice. The proper consultation procedure and so on. The problem that we have, and I'm sympathetic, uh, is that like our Hamlets, which is a very homogeneous community, uh, and I know the entire Hamlets in Friday um, prayer time there is free parking. We have many religious institutions, we have demands about funerals, about weddings and so on. So it's about balancing different needs. And as Stephen said, you know, are there any empty spaces? So the easiest thing for me to be, say, do, do would be say, yes, I agree, we'll go and look at it seriously. We are looking at it. There is a review of all aspects of parking. And what I will say through you, Chair, is that if we can actually show the, 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 the demand, the need, who comes, from where and so on, and that there's some scientific, some, some objective basis, right? Because if most of the of, 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 of your congregation are local, and it's only a few, uh, so again, I think there's a need for some more harder sort of stuff. But you can fit that in into the parking review, and I will give you a guarantee here that I don't mind acting along with the chair or one of your committee people to act as a messenger to the council and to tell you when the process starts, how you can fit your views in, uh, and if need be, meet with the relevant. Uh, uh, councillor who's in charge of the whole parking review, which is Councillor Ken Clark. Yep. In terms of the drugs. Oh, and the drugs question. Totally agree. I live in Central Park, so I know what the problems are. Just two days ago, uh, I was going home um, and I, I went to the park to the entrance uh, on Central Park Road, and there were two people smoking there. You could just smell the smoke. It is disgusting. Uh, if I find it disgusting, you know, women, young children, and so on. And this is an open daylight. Um, now, uh, we don't have any control over the police's operations. What we do have control is over our own law enforcement officers. And we've made a major change here. One of the election promises last year, and we honored it, um, was to have an enforcement officer in each ward. So each ward has got a dedicated officer. So you've got your own, for lack of a better word, council police officer in each ward. They don't have the same powers as the police, right? So they, 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 don't get me wrong. Uh, and their job is to patrol that ward looking for fight tips, rubbish, but also this monitor this sort of behavior. Now, there's only one per ward because I wish that we had more. We have our own 40, uh, 46 Metropolitan Police officers that we actually pay the Metropolitan Police to work for our objectives. So we actually give them specific tasks. If we think there's a particular problem in a particular park or particular area, then we can actually direct them uh, to, to, to go and deal with those issues. So they work under our sort of operational, uh, so, so, uh, uh, under what we think are our objectives, not what the Metropolitan Police say. So the question of resources, but as I say, what we're trying to do is use CCTV. We have invested very heavily in CCTV. We've got state-of-the-art 3 million pound CCTV sort of complex in Folkestone Road, uh, cameras. So it's about, you know, targeting specific areas, specific needs, and putting pressure on the police. Can I, can I just make a suggestion on that? I wonder, on this particular point, whether it would be useful to invite the borough police commander or one of his deputies to yeah. the Bilal Mosque. I'd be delighted to come with him, maybe do it shortly after yeah. the election. We could have a discussion like this about these policing issues and the worries in the community about how the police are, are doing their, their jobs. No, that'd be great. I, I mean, just to explore that a, a bit more, I mean, the, the feeling within the community is that the standard is dropping. You know, uh, drugs is increasing, whether it's statistically right or, or and, and you have yes. allocated resources, but it doesn't seem like either it's been allocated in the right way or it's been allocated enough. Fly tipping is in the increase. You live down Central Park Road. If you walk down Arnold Avenue every day on the corner, there's rubbish there, okay. and it's something new every day. Yeah. So, I mean, the brand image of New Ham and East Ham in particular is going down. Yeah which leads to people just using East Ham and living in East Ham as a stepping stone to moving to another area. And as a result, yeah. the, 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 the standards of, of living 
uh, for our community and for our next generation yeah. is not there, which affects the, the, the livelihood of, of what they're doing here. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, uh, let me be very honest. Right? I, I just walked on St. John's Road to come to this meeting. Uh, you know, the car park, yeah. St. John's Road. You know, there's an LED substation. Yeah. Now, actually, there's a fight in there that I reported. that has been there for about three, four days. And uh, if I felt in despair, then I can imagine how the residents feel. Now, that is not actually our land. It's LED's land. Now, they, um, they've got no sense of social responsibility at all. That's the electricity substation. Now, I've been looking at ways where we can actually block it off and then charge the LEP. Uh, 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 I think a lot is also to do with people's attitudes as well. Today, I was in the high street with Stephen, helping uh, with a street stall. And this woman was smoking outside W. Phillips jewelry shop. And what did she do? How, she, uh, I think she only smoked half the cigarette and she just threw it to the pavement. Now, actually, if we, had, if we had an enforcement officer, then we would have fined her 80 pounds. We do that. But if you let people get away with small things, then they go into bigger things. But unfortunately, there was no enforcement officer around. And she had, there was a rubbish bin just a few feet away. Why not go and put your cigarette, you know, uh, and, uh, in the bin? A lot of it, we are the only council in, the, in London, in the country, that still does not charge for collecting heavy items. You ring the council up, and we collect six bulky items, mattresses and uh, heavy stuff, free of charge. But yet people still dump mattresses. Right? Why? You know, we actually are doing it free for you. Is that a new magazine and so on? But I accept, Chair, that standards have slipped recently. I see it myself. I live in the area. I don't walk past the fight it. Uh, and so on. St. John's Road has been there for four days now. Um, but uh, look, the government cuts have affected us enormously. And that's a fact. Uh, I, uh, the, the worst effect, the effects of the curse haven't even started biting us. The next three years, you will see the, the curse biting through. And even if there's a change of government, which I hope there is a Labour government, they will not be able to deal with the immensity of the, of the, of the task straight away. Uh, it's a question, basically, of, of how we implement the, 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 address the, the, the issue of the deficit uh, in a responsible way without causing pain to communities. You need to invest as well to put so more money comes to the economy. Uh, 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 but to use the cuts, I'm not going to use that as an excuse. Right. We've got 46 pol petrol and police officers that we bought. Uh, uh, we paid the police to help uh, get those officers work for us. We've got our own enforcement officers, 51. Uh, we invest a lot of money in, in crime and social behavior. But this is 51 for the whole para. So what we thought was, instead of them being the high street, have one per ward. Stratford has got two because Stratford is expanding all the time. Yeah. So this one person, if the metropolitan police don't patrol at a local level, we are trying to get our officers. And bear, bear in mind that they are not proper police officers. They, they don't have the full powers. They don't have the powers of arrest, for instance. I went to France recent, uh, last year to look at how the French poli uh, council police work. They call them municipal police in France. They actually have the powers to arrest, pe uh, to detain people. Not arrest them, but detain people. They see them committing a criminal offense. Then the proper police come and arrest them. We are lobbying the government, New has been at the forefront, give our council enforcement officers much more powers. They've got certain powers now which makes them more or less equivalent to the special constables. Some of them, not all of them. So we're looking at a variety of ways, but I think at the end of the day, it's a fundamental habit. If you don't change people's habits, you know? Um, we, uh, we're trying to do a 24-7 cleaning operation. Today the West Ham is playing, you will see after the West Ham game, the council cleaning services should be in operation and cleaning up straight away, not leaving the rubbish till Monday. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Gentlemen, first of all, with due respect, I'll come back to parking system again. This is not the only Muslim community, it's all belong to resident of New Embarrass. Mm -hmm. uh, the council can do something, but I don't know why I'm not doing there. No safety. And then it's, they should look into this uh, system, <coughs> such as it's a good thing they issue the permit for a pass zone to the families. Or when they move to another zone, one to be the same problem, the permit is useless. <laughs> Second, a lot of complaint from the families comes. When there is a death occur, the visitor come from another towns, they used to be, we contact the council, they are very helpful. But now I think this facility has been taken away. I don't know why. It should be. When you be approached for the council, at least give us the ticket so we can provide the <coughs> families, the visitors come from the other towns. They said we have got the system go back to the underlying system or something, but that time 
where there is a happen that hurt the poor, they need the help actually the family. But all this system been taken away, I don't know why. The third thing, the safety. All right, the people apply for uh, the disabled person, for disabled, uh, what you call it, uh, parking. parking. But a lot of, uh, they just want to build up, they don't realize the safety. At the Shulbury Road, there are two, uh, nearly every, every day there is near to the accident. One in front of uh, the Derby Road, the slightly bend, the people come either side of that Shulbury Road, they can't see what vehicles are coming from out of Derby Street, and there is right in front of at the Derby, at the Shulby Road Junction, there's a parking. I think they should look into it. There's a lot of, uh, this is belong to the safety. Please, I request to you take this but whoever. This is the mosque, isn't it? It's, 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 it's not the mosque. No, it's the junction, Derby Road. Yeah, junction, yeah. Yeah. They should uh, do care of the safety. These uh, very helpful, not only the Muslim community, mm -hmm. it's all we face, to, we are facing e every day. Uh, they should uh, also do something. Thank you, Lord. Do you want to briefly reply to that, and then we'll move to another question? Well, certainly, the, the, the Shrewsbury Road one, uh, you know, I'm aware of that, yeah. and um, we actually... And, and parking the uh, permit went to another zone, there should be less... Yeah, no, that actually, because at a personal level, I think that's a very, very good case, uh, and uh, that's something I think... What I will do, all the parking issues, Chair, later on, if you email me yeah. in, the, uh, in the note form, but that's something, I mean, personally, if you have got a permit for one area, is there a case for looking at using that permit for the whole of Newham? Some people say yes. Right, you know, you, if you're a resident of Newham, you pay council tax, you got a permit for this town, then is there a case that you should be able to use it, say, for a state? It's one borough, uh, and vice versa, you know? So this, uh, Uncle, there's certainly a strong case for that. Uh, Keep in mind, a lot of people, they are pension, unemployment. I know, I know. And if they got to pay the parking, we yeah. run to another street, it's very difficult. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. And just going back to the funerals, uh, I've helped many uh, religious institutions uh, when they approach me. They want, you know, more permits and so on. I, uh, I'm not sure it's causing 50 pence or something. But again, one of the things the parking review is looking at is now, look, I know this problem. There's funerals, and there's weddings, there's birthdays, and so on. So you've got to draw a line somewhere. Um, and it's a question of demand, the needs of the communities, and so on. Funerals, certainly, I think it could be argued that you've got to show a degree of sensitivity. Uh, people would argue. So again, that's something that we need to feed in, into the, into the process. What I do want to say is, I'm not, I can't make any promises here, but I do hear what you're saying. I think there's some issues that everyone, all sections of the community, are uh, actually up in arms about, you know, as, as Ken Clark himself once said, if you stop to buy a pint of milk uh, for 15 minutes and then you find you get a ticket. Um, and um, so, so we want local businesses who are always complaining about the effect of parking charges uh, on them. Uh, I mean, I know the cafe across the road uh, in St. Uh, St. Bartholomew's Church, uh, the woman who should run the cafe, uh, she said one of the reasons that the cafe wasn't doing well was because of, of, of parking. I hear it all the time. I can't deny that. So you'll look into this? I think uh, yeah, if we do a summary of the issues no, later no from this meeting, this is for us to hear yeah. and respond as much as we can. Perfect. Okay. okay. Why not make it okay. maybe one uh, zone rather than yeah. have a different zone and make yeah. a little bit extra charges and, uh, re for the yeah. residents? Yeah, that's what I was saying. One of the things that I personally, my own view is that it should, it should, if already 60, if the residents of those areas want, there will be quite soon this year sometime, but what about consultation uh, for the, like the whole part of one zone? Because, like, let me give an example, the back of um, Central Park, uh, Pullins Avenue, half of Pullins Avenue said they didn't want residential parking, <coughs> the other half said they wanted it. So we gave it to the other half. Six months later, the residents from the other half are telling me, why, why aren't you giving it to us? I said, well, you people said you didn't want it, that's why. So anyway, I, I managed to get an officer not to do full <coughs> consultation again just for 50 houses, but just go to do you know, informal consultation. And of course they wanted it because all the cars were parking in their road. So and then now the whole of Pullins is a, a part of the residential parking zone. But you're absolutely correct. I think there's a case for the whole borough.